start the year off right by bringing some balance to your home through the decor. My name is Laura Clementi from Laola Designs. I'm an interior designer that focuses on practical feng shui in your home. In having good feng shui in your house, you definitely have better, healthier relationships uh, because it starts within you. And I think if you take care of you and you take care of your home, everything else will follow. Get ready to bring balance and good energy into your home with the use of Feng Shui on today's SoFlo Home Project. Welcome to SoFlo Home Project, I'm Elena Capra. We are so excited to be back to our Saturday morning time slot, so welcome back to SoFlo Home Project Saturdays. Now today's home tour is going to be an extra special one, because not only are we touring a beautiful home, but we are going to take a look how the ancient Chinese practice of feng shui is woven throughout the design of this home. This 4,500 square foot newly built home has five bedrooms and six bathrooms. The chi feels just right in every room of this home. It's all about great design through Feng Shui. We're here today in Fort Lauderdale, joined by interior designer Laura Clementi. Laura, welcome to SoFlo Thank Home you. Project. Thank you. Thank you. Look forward to it. Yeah, so you specialize in interior design with the basic principles of Feng Shui. Correct. And I think this is going to be a great way to share with our audience how you incorporate some of those basic principles, but in a practical way into your design projects. Yes, so. absolutely. Feng Shui can get very complicated and I have a lot of clients that reach out to me that want to have that feel and the energy without really getting into um, the energy numbers and the personal Feng Shui. So this is home Feng Shui. So let's quickly touch on what the, the whole principles of Feng Shui is about. So Feng Shui is the art of energy and it's really important for the placement of the furniture to flow and for the air to flow through it. So Laura, let's break it down, basic principles of Feng Shui from when you arrive at the home. What are the most important things? Well, number one, you have to make it super visible for um, visitors to spot the number of your house so they're not frustrated when they get to your home. So they come in with good energy. So simple and so practical, right? Once you get in through the house, just make it welcoming. So Laura, we talked about some of the do's for the entry of the home. Now, are there any specific don'ts that are just like key things you should not do? Absolutely. The number one thing you don't want to do is block the entry. People block the entry with a sofa, they block the entry with a, a console table. You do not want to do that. You don't want to come into a space and feel kind of rejected. It should feel open and just like you can flow right through the entry. Absolutely. Or in the, the living space here, what are some of the things, some of the principles to keep in mind when setting up a formal living space? Um, no sharp edges. They're called poison arrows and we tend to have them in the simplest of forms like a coffee table, square coffee table. What's important to remember is that nobody lives on that extreme of feng shui. So uh, there are cures of things that you can do to offset. You just basically lie to the eye. Or maybe put a, a large round um, tray, kind of like the one we have here. Throws, it's really important. You could throw them over the sofas to cover up the sharp edges. Natural plants uh, as much as possible so for lots oxygen. Of greenery. And we have some right over here. This is beautiful. Yeah, so this is a live moss wall. It's it's alive. <laughs> and it's living thing. Living thing. Wow. And I love the pop of the greenery. Yes. It just feels so fresh and also very inviting. It's well. very important for the oxygen in the house. Now when it comes to light fixtures and stuff, we see a lot that are more spiky and starburst. Are those also things that are no? Those are no no's, right? yeah. You just feel an edge. Right? If you have something over your head that's that's pokey, you're afraid it might fall on you. So, so they're supposed very to feel common clean sense and open. Co correct. So Laura, there's a lot of other basic principles. We're just touching on a few here or there. Anything in this room that you would call out that you specifically did to improve the chi? The one key in this room, which is something somebody would oversee, is the clock on that wall. 
The center of your house is the most important and a, a moving clock is moving energy. It's never stopping energy, so it flows through from one room to the other all the way through the kitchen. Very cool, I did not know that. So you should incorporate that somewhere in the central part of your home. Yes. Now I notice we have other things placed throughout. I see some chimes. How does that incorporate into Feng Shui? Well, that gets a little bit deeper into Feng Shui. Um, that's one of the essential tools of Feng Shui. You're supposed to have two chimes in your home. Uh, as the energies move, you move them. They're the most practical thing to put in your house to bring Feng Shui into your home. That's very good to know. So, Laura, we've got a lot more to talk about. We're gonna tour through this beautiful home that you designed for your clients and sort of go through some of the key rooms and share the basic principles of Feng Shui and how you incorporated that. And we're gonna check that out when we come back. Coming up, learn what Feng Shui principles apply to different rooms in your home on Soflo Home Project. back to Soflo Home Project. I'm Alina Capra and we are continuing our tour of this beautiful home with interior designer Laura Clementi. Laura, so we have looked at the main living space, talked about what you did there to bring some of the basic principles of Feng Shui in, but now we're in a fun space here in this home. The playroom is found adjacent to the living room. This creative space is perfect to keep kids entertained all day long. What were some of the ways and the challenges of bringing Feng Shui into a playroom space? Well, playrooms are pretty simple in the sense that children normally don't sleep in them because that's a whole other level of Feng Shui. But as long as it's colorful and cheerful, you can't go wrong. The most important aspect of the playroom though is to make sure things are tidy and that's very hard to do with little kids. <laughs> I can imagine, but I see that there's a place for everything in here right yes. now. We've got a lot of great bins and storage. You also bought a lot of like nature elements in here. I'm seeing these little ottomans around that look like tree stumps, which are so cute by the way. Mm -hmm. um, we've got a little fire pit, so we've got some fire. Of course, the beautiful view to the outside. How important was it to get that connection of nature in the space as well? It's, it was very important, especially for this family. They really want to purchase a home in North Carolina uh, so I told them that I would bring North Carolina to them. I love that. And so I, I think we played it right. And also the playground is outside. So once these doors open up, it becomes like an indoor outdoor playroom for the children. That's awesome. And I love that the, the sort of greenish tone of the yeah. rug mimics a bit of grass yeah. and it, you've got this great house here. So it's a nice way to sort of bring that a bit of almost biophilia design as well. So you're kind of bringing a lot of different elements yes, that absolutely. all create harmony. Yes. <laughs> so the more harmony and calmness the in the better. home, the better. We've got a lot of great color in here and we are also going to go further into it and talk a little bit more about do's and don'ts for kids bedrooms since we're sort of in the kids room theme and we are going to get to that. But first let's check in with our friends at FHIA and see what they have going on today. I recently had the opportunity to meet with a young man that was interviewing at our company and he asked the question of, you know, who are we, what are we as a company, what is, what is FHIA? And it was something that I'd never really been asked before and the biggest thing that came to my mind is day in and day out what we strive to do is put the homeowner's needs in front of ours. We see it as a great privilege that we're invited to somebody's home and potentially being able to help them you know, navigate this difficult process and this difficult decision and trying to find a reliable contractor. We found that it's best if we're able to really listen to the homeowner and put their goals, their needs in, in front of the agenda of a sales rep or a company. And day in and day out, we feel that that's what we're able to do really, really well. So what's really been cool for us to witness is we can be really, really successful by changing the concept of the contracting world, specifically here in South Florida where it's kind of notorious for being what's good for the contractor happens. We've been able to change that and say what's good for the homeowner really could be good for us. And day in and day out, we've been able to live by that and putting the homeowner's needs in front of ours. So it's really cool that we've seen a shift in the industry and if we've had something to do with that, we're really proud of that. But what we're proud of the most is day in and day out, we get the opportunity to help families make great decisions for their homes. Back to you, Elena. Now, Laura, this is not a bedroom. 
but there are other rooms in the home where children will sleep. And in those rooms, how do you bring some of the basic Feng Shui principles into those spaces for harmony and balance? Well, the most important part of a kid's bedroom and actually any bedroom is to make sure that the a backboard of the bed is nice and solid and strong against a wall and facing uh, your command position, which is opposite of the door. And same principles as a playroom in the sense that um, tidy up, you know, keep the car. It's all about having a clean house. This very is an inter much. interlying theme. Keep your house clean and organized and it will feel more balanced. Very much so. So of course in a younger child's room we won't have the sharp edges, which I know could be problematic in achieving good Feng Shui principles in a home. But are there other things that we sort of need to consider? Definitely not in any children's room period. You should not have any like aggressive type theme of animals like sharks or anything that might get them rattled and scared. Okay, so you really, you, you gotta be careful about even everything from the stuffed animals to the dolls that are on display. Yes. You want soothness, you want calmness, you want those babies to sleep all night. And it's also very important, um, which is an aspect when you get deeper into feng shui, to learn the child's energy number, but that is just a whole another conversation. So it can get quite complex. Yes. So to our viewers at home, if you are looking to learn more, there are ways you can you could read up, you could study, you could take courses and, and just really immerse. Yeah. But for the basic stuff, we give the simple things you could do to improve your home's energy and balance. Yes. Coming up next, learn how to bring balance to your home office on Soplo Home Project. So we're here today at another beautiful South Florida home, but we're not gonna to be touring this one. We're actually gonna be talking with the Alvarez Group with Sterling One Realty to find out how they're making the home buying or selling process easier for potential clients and even saving them some money. So we're here today joined by Ashley Alvarez and William Alvarez of the Alvarez Group with Sterling One Realty. And we're gonna talk a little bit more about your business because you are a family business. You grew up in the real estate industry. Yeah, that's correct. So our family actually founded Sterling One Realty over 25 years ago. And we've been pretty much working with them since we were in middle school. We'd be answering phone calls, doing open houses. So it was only natural as soon as we turned 18 to get our license and we've continued the legacy ever since. That is awesome. So it's always been some an interest of ours and whether it was we went to college in different backgrounds, it all had to go with real estate as well. Ashley got her bachelor's in marketing and I have a background in economics and eventually got my general contractor license. So you guys have a lot of experience in real estate. Now there's a lot of competition out there. So what are some of the things that set you apart? from your competitors. Right, so just in the past couple of years, we've sold over $50 million worth of real estate. I know that we're young, but we have tons of experience. He's had his license for over 10 years. I've had my license for eight years. And we pretty much offer some great incentives that no other realtors offer in South Florida. What incentives do you offer? So we always offer a flexible closing credit, which is the difference of several thousand dollars at the end of a deal. A lot of the times in your standard deals, things come up in the inspection period, unforeseen extra expenses that they're gonna have to get into once they purchase a home. And we want our buyers to be at ease. We don't want them to be stressed. It's supposed to be a happy time. And we like to offer money out of our pockets in order to get the deal done. And that's a really big savings. And now for sellers, you also offer quite a bit of incentive. Right, so our seller's incentive is huge. We offer a 4% commission opposed to a 6% commission, which is industry standard. So so that's a 30% savings on your closing costs as a seller. So that's thousands and thousands of dollars that can go towards the purchase of your new home, towards home renovations, or just savings in general. And when it comes down to buying a home, every dollar counts. Exactly. Most importantly, how do they contact you with the Alvarez Group? So to find out more about these incentives and how you can save thousands of dollars, you can call 786-877-7548. Or you can visit our website at www.thealvarezgroupmia.com. Well, thanks so much for spending some time with us today and sharing a little bit more about your business with our viewers. Thank, Thank you. you.
Welcome back to Soflo Home Project. I'm Elena Capra and we are continuing our tour of this beautiful home designed by Laura Clementi. Laura, you are not only an interior designer, but you are a specialist when it comes to feng shui in your projects. Yes. And we have toured a couple of areas of the home, but now we are in a very important room in any house or condo, and that's the home office. The home office is located on the second level of this home. This harmonious environment is the perfect space to be more productive in. I find this is a room that we get a lot of questions about. How do you set it up? Which way does the desk face? There's always a lot of debate and options when it comes to that. So I figured we'd start with the layout to create that good energy and flow in an office. Yes, the desk is definitely the most important part of the office space. It always has to be in a very strong command position as this one with a strong back and a strong chair. So it should be facing the door if you can plan the room that way. Correct, yeah, the door should be on the, on the corner of, not directly in front of the desk, but okay. off to the corner. So if somebody comes in, you're not startled. You you're know. able to greet them, your back is not to them. Correct. So layout is key, but there are other things that come into play. I, I love this room. You always wanna have a plant and a fountain in your office. So talk to us about the fountain. We've got a really cute one right there. It does not need to be large. It could be tabletop, desktop, Correct. placed on a pedestal. We just need some moving water. Okay. Uh, it's, it's for wealth and growth. So definitely want to add that to any office space. And is the color green symbolic in Feng Shui? It's a symbolic to money, absolutely. So perfect place for the home office, conducting business, all of that. Yes. Next we bring the principles of Feng Shui into the main sleeping quarters on Soflo Home Project. Home Project. I'm Elena Capra and we're continuing our tour of this beautiful home with interior designer Laura Clementi. Laura, so we have talked about the ways that you it kind of infused the principles of Feng Shui into your design projects and we've toured several rooms of the home and here we are and I think the most important room in a house to get good energy, a serene and calm feeling to it, the primary bedroom. Yes. <laughs> the primary bedroom is found in a peaceful corner of this home. This serene space is perfect for relaxation and a good night's sleep. Once again, we're going back to the number one principle, which is command position. So the bed is in command position right now. So place against the wall, the entry is off across from it, but over to the side. That is ideal. Absolutely, yeah. Make your bed every morning, super important. Okay. There's also a very important aspect to uh, feng shui in the bedroom and it's to duplicate everything in doubles. I love sure. symmetry, so that's yes. great to hear. <laughs> so you should always have two of each from yes. the, like balance with the bedside lamps, all of the things like that, everything that goes with yeah. it. Everything in multiples of two. It's always important in the bedrooms to have in the southwest corner um, a nice little altar with uh, fresh flowers, or candles, it just kind of helps uh, pictures of you know you and your spouse or inspiration of love and once again duplicates of two. Well these are all some really great tips. I think you've given us stuff that's so simple and easy to think about when putting together home or any room in our home and I know you said it could Feng Shui gets much much deeper and much more complex and you if you are interested you could really follow all of the principles there's a lot more to it right there's so much to it. it it could get very complicated for people that's why as long as you keep it to the basics and to the understanding of common sense I think at the practicality it's you can pull it off well, it sounds great. It sounds like an easy way to bring good chi and energy into all of our homes by following some of these things that you've shared with us today. So thank, thank you. Thank you, guys. And now let's take a look at what design inspiration we have planned for you next week on SoFlo Home Project. We tour a beautiful 1920s home that has been meticulously restored to its original beauty. See how a homeowner's passion for history can turn design and decor into a labor of love. And before we go, let's check in with Hunter Frankie, the host of SoFlo Health, and see what he has going on tomorrow. Hunter, what's up? 
Hey there, Elena. Did you know that just getting outside is overall better for your health? Well, it is. And we'll talk about it on SoFlow Health, but a few of those benefits are improved memory, protecting children's vision, and a whole lot more. Plus, personal trainer Morgan Shapiro helps us prepare for our New Year's running routines with a warm-up that'll help protect our joints and everything else for that matter. We're all tired of COVID, but we will update you a little bit on what's new with Omicron. All of that and more is tomorrow on SoFlow Health at 1230 on the one and only Local 10. Thanks, Hunter. That sounds great. We will definitely be watching. And to our viewers at home, thanks for joining us again this week. And we hope to see you again next week on Saturday. We're back for another episode of SoFlow Home Project right here on Local 10. And remember, there's no place like SoFlow Home. If you missed any part of this episode, or if you're looking for more design inspiration, make sure to check out all episodes online at SoFloShows.com. And don't forget to follow us on social media on Facebook and Instagram.